Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And this is the BRS Blade Runner Systems Nomad. The Evolve Nomad. So BRS Evolve Nomad. <laughs> Long name. And, you know, I, first off, I want to thank Benjamin for sending me some of his knives to check out. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support you've given us, man. Thank you very much. Um, this knife I am going to have a small bit of a rant at the end, so um, I'll try to keep it uh, short and sweet, but yeah, let's just get right into this knife. So this knife has a three and a quarter inch blade of S35 VN blade steel. Overall length is seven and a half inches. Now on Blade HQ, it said it was 8.1 inches, but it's seven and a half inches. It has G10 scales. Steel liner with a titanium clip, titanium pivot collar, and a titanium backspacer. It is rather thick, though, at, I think, uh, 0 0.62 inches. So, you know, well over a half inch thick. It is pretty thick. I'll compare it to another knife here in a second. But it's not a very long knife. It's the same length as the, the Benchmade Bug Out. And here is, just for another size comparison, it's a little bit longer than the Para 3. It's the same length as the Benjamin Bugger, if you know the size of that. And then here's the Spyderco Shaman. Because I want to show you the thickness difference. And the Spyderco Shaman is a bit longer. But then look at the thickness between the two. So you can see how, real, how thick it is. It is quite a bit It is quite a bit thicker. Now, as chunky as this knife is, it's cool, but I do have some, some decent complaints, but we'll get into that here in just a second. It does have a beautiful stone washing on the blade, and it has like a, a satin on the flats, but then a, a really nice, good-looking stone wash. Now, let's talk about cutting with this thing, because I did cut with it a bit. Um, to see how it cut, and it's, it doesn't cut very good. It'll get by, but you're talking right here in the flat area, 20 thousandths, and then here it gets up to over 50 thousandths thick. 50 thousandths. The blade stock is 160 thousandths. So very thick blade stock, thick behind the edge, and it's not a full flat. So there's times where it, it's like you're cutting and it just gets hung up. And then there's other times where it cuts through just fine. It just kind of depends on the angle. The, you know, like if you're cutting cardboard, like what direction you're cutting it, you know, the momentum you have. It, now you have a lot of leverage behind your cut, which we're going to get into in a second with these with these ergos. But with the with the blade actually passing through materials, it's not great. It does not cut very good. Will it get you by? Absolutely. Will it cut? Absolutely. Does it do it good? No, it does not. There's times when it, it gets very very much hung up, and it's almost like there's nothing you can do but pull the knife out. And then other times it slides through okay. So it just kind of depends. Now another thing is because it's a Tonto, you don't have very much cutting right here before it'll slip out. Like as you're cutting, once you get to right here, this just wants to slip out. So you got to keep the cutting in. If you're going to cut like with this part of the edge, then it's got to be angled a certain way so it keeps going like this so it doesn't go like this out of the, the stuff you're cutting. So there, you know, you do have to keep control of the blade and keep it right in a good spot so it doesn't slide out. Now, for utility cuts, it works pretty good. Even though this is a very thick tip, and it's still very acute, even for such a thick tip. So for utility cuts, it does work just fine with either tip, even this secondary tip right here. It also works really good. And if you notice, the blade kind of has like a drop point thing going on right here where it drops down. So it's very easy to get to the tip before utility cuts 
or to the secondary tip. So it does work good in utility cutting. Now, um, it's not uh, a utility cutting knife, but it works good Consider, you know. Um, it is an American Tonto, and it's S35VN, so you're going to have good edge retention and strength from S35VN. Now, the Ergos, the Ergos are really good because it's so thick. Now, with a knife like this, with it being so thick, you know, it's not like you're holding on to something really small like a pencil, you know, where you don't have a lot of squeeze to it. With this, you get a lot of pressure on this handle. I mean, it, you can squeeze the heck out of it. It's very, very comfortable. It's not very big, but it winds up working out just fine for my hand. And seeing as how it has this straight back area right here, it really fills your palm really good. Even this front choil area is very comfortable to pinch up like this. The whole thing is just very comfortable. In the reverse grip, my finger happens to land directly on top of that little point right there, but I can maneuver it out of the way if I want to. But in this grip, I don't really feel the clip hardly at all. I mean, if I do feel it, I don't feel it when cutting or in use, so it's not a big deal to me at all. Um, so the ergos are great. The action. Now, the action's good. It does have a light detent, but that's a good thing since it is a reverse flicking hole or thumb flicking hole. Now the hole is chamfered all the way around, which, you know, I don't really like that much because it doesn't, it's not sharp. It's knocked down heavily. So it feels rounded. So you do have to kind of squeeze your finger in there really good. So it doesn't slip out because it's pretty slippery. Now the detent's light, so it's still easy to do. Don't get me get me wrong, but, uh, you know, you do get used to it and then it's just fine. As you can see, now you can also slow roll it. You do have to get around this corner right here, but it's just fine. Or you can do the pinch, then the roll. So the action's good. You know, it's just the hole is chamfered so much that I wish it was sharper. Um, the drop on it, very smooth since it's on bearings. The detent is right there, and you notice right here, this nub right here, where the flipper tab would be if it was a flipper, hit your finger when you unlock it, and it's pretty much always past the detent. The detent ball is nice and early, which I do like to see, so the action for opening and closing is pretty good. Now, the access to the lock bar, it's weird because it looks like you have so much access to the lock bar, but you really don't. It's deceiving because when you get your finger in there it feels like you you know like you're not hitting anything because the the liner or the lock bar lines up perfectly with this g10 so you you gotta come in from the side and squeeze your finger in there and since the blade is so thick it's very wide here so you, in some ways, it feels like you're not going to unlock it, like you're kind of having to squeeze your finger in there a lot, but then in other ways, it unlocks just fine. It's kind of weird, um, but yeah, you do have to squeeze your finger in there and really push like to the corner. You're not really coming from the side because coming from the side, you're kind of just hitting the G10, you know, but... You got to kind of go at an angle, squeeze it, and smash it in there, and it works just fine. But it looks like you have tons of access, but it's just a little bit deceiving. But it's fine, though, because you get used to it, and you realize just how you got to squeeze your finger in there, and it's not an issue at all, as you can see. Now, centering's really good. Um, the, like I said, it has a titanium backspacer, titanium clip. The clip works really good in and out of the pocket. No complaints how the clip works in the hand or in the pocket. It works really good. Um, it slides in and out really good. You can easily get it in and out of the pocket, opened up to a cut, and then back in the pocket one-handed. No issues. The night has nice tension, a good ramp. Um, the only thing I would say is that it is low, so you do have quite a bit hanging out of your pocket. Now, some people like that because they like to be able to grab onto their knife and pull it out of their pocket and get it open. So, you know, it's, for some people, this clip will be great. And then people that like deep carry clips, it might not be your style because it's not deep carry at all. But it works good. 
Now let's, um, the choil, the sharpening choil, sharpening choil is just fine. I did not sharpen it. If I did sharpen it, you know, it is an American Tonto. So I'd have to sharpen this, you know, one, one, uh, edge first and then go to the other edge. I'd have to sharpen like this side first and then go to this side and then go to this side, then this side, you know, marry the two together to get a nice tip. Um, and this is rather thick up here, so it's going to take a bit more effort on the top portion than it will on the bottom portion. But you basically sharpen it like two different knives and marry the edge. I've done a bunch of videos on sharpening contos, so. But I did not sharpen this one, but it does look like the choil is just fine. Um, good job on the choil. Now, the jimping does work as well, nice and sharp. But let's get into some bad and so I can get my rant over. So, a um, couple things just right off the bat that people can probably already say out loud. T6s, I do not like the T6s. It does have a T8 pivot. I don't know why they wouldn't just use T8s across the board. But it does have T6s here, and then there's going to be hardware underneath. I did not take it apart, but you have T6s on the clip, T6 right here, and then when you take off the scale, there's going to be more hardware. I would have rather seen T8 all the way around. Now, the, the whole, I don't like that it's uh, chamfered as much as it is. I wish it was a little sharper where you, you know, where you don't feel like you're slipping out as much. Um, now... None of those are really that big of an issue to me. My biggest issue is a twofold. This thing is thick, okay? I don't mind the ergos being thick, but the blade and behind the edge is so thick, it's not a great cutter. It's not going to cut good. But where I do see it being good at is scraping and prying, okay? So the blade is, it, feels, it seems like it's almost set up for you know like you, you construction work where you scrape and you, you you know you might use this edge to go down the seam of something and then use this portion to wedge in there and pry it you know a little bit now where the where it's a negative on that is that this the stop pin is super small and it's pushed up all the way up really tight so the lock bars here, it locks up here and the stop pins here, but it's so super small, like especially for this thick of a knife. It has thick steel liners, thick scale, 160 thousandths thick blade. I mean, just super thick, but then it has a stop pin the same size as the Kaiser Shard. <laughs> So it just does not make sense to me. I wish that they would have used a thicker stop pin. Like if we bring back the Shaman again, look at the difference in the stop pin. Look at how big this stop pin is compared to that. That would make sense to me because you have this thick of a handle, right? This is where I talk about when I say blade to handle um, geometry, I guess you could say. Maybe I say it. I don't know. But basically just where the handle and the blade makes sense. Make it make sense. And I argue this all the time. Make it make sense. Because you have great ergos, right? A really thick grip so that you can get leverage. The blade is super thick that you're going to need leverage to get behind because it's not going to pass through materials very good. And you have thick liners and everything, yet you have a thin little stop pen. So it's not, it's like it's heavy duty in so many ways and hard use in so many ways and then light duty in others. Even though it does have a small stop pin, as you can see right there, you see the stop pin is really close to the blade where it rotates. And I almost wonder if stuff could fall down in there and, you know, kind of get in the way right there. It hasn't happened, but it is very, very close to the blade. Um, and you know, even though it is a tiny stop pin, it's, it's very solid. I, you know, there's no, there's no play in any direction, um, at all. It does feel very solid. It's just, you know, it's so overbuilt in so many ways. I wish that the stop pin was also overbuilt, you know, it just make more sense for the grind, the blade, the handle, the skin, you know, the liners, just everything put together. You know, is it, will it get you by? Absolutely. Can you make a cut with it? Absolutely. If it's just going to be an EDC knife that you make a cut with every now and then, it's going to be just fine. I mean, but to me, the blade shaping grind on this knife is made for heavy duty.
It's made for picking and scraping and uh, maybe light duty prying, um, you know, uh, a cut here and there, a couple, you know, utility cuts, using it as a work knife, a tool. But then in other ways, it's like, um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't make sense. I would rather this cut better and be a better cutter because it's really not a big knife. Um, does it need to be? No, because you do get a good solid grip on it to wedge it through the materials because it's not going to cut good. It's definitely wedging. So since it's wedging through materials, it's good that you have a lot of leverage. I would have just rather seen a nice big stop pin in there. It would have made it make more sense in my opinion. Uh, but like I said, it'll still work. It'll still get you by. It's just, you know, if it's going to be a knife, right? And if it's going to cut, give me this leverage with good geometry in the blade that way i'm not looking at it like okay this thing is a, a pry bar right i'm looking at it like this is a knife it's gonna cut and it cuts good but that's you know it's to me it's um cut sometimes and i don't i don't know what i'm talking about it's i just w wish that it did cut a little bit better i wish the geometry in the blade was better um i wish it made more sense for this this style of knife you know um tantos are really good in construction they they work really good i carried a tanto many times building houses and working on roofs and work, working on windows and using them to to cut the seams of stuff and you know pry and scrape and you know like say the trim around um your the the wall right you can use it to to maybe uh to get behind the cord around you know and pry it off a little bit while you have your your pry bar over here you know maybe helping you assisting you while you're going down it or something there's lots of benefits to an american tanto i love an american tanto um so you know i do see this as a good knife for certain things it's just going to be a little bit lighter duty in my opinion than it makes out to be it makes out to be a very hard use, but then it's not in others. Now, is the stop pin fine? Yeah, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. And with the type of work you would do with a knife like this, it's it'll probably last a long, long time and be just fine. Um, you know, I just wish it was more of a cutting performance knife rather than, you know, a, a wedge. Um, but it's cool though, man. It's cool. And like I said, and if you're the type of person that gets a knife to make a cut once a day, it's going to work just fine for you. You're not going to have to worry about it because you're not doing repeated cuts over and over. And then that's where you run into the issues. So if it's just an EDC knife where you pull it out of your pocket, you make a cut, you make a utility cut once a day or something, you know, you maybe pick something every day or once a day or so, I don't know, you know, where I'm just basically saying is you only use your knife a couple times a week and it's for light duty, little things, you know, a cut here and there, picking something out here and there, you know, it's going to be just fine. So, um, I think it's really cool. And I appreciate Benjamin letting me check this out. And I hope people don't think like that. I'm giving it a bad review or that I don't like it. Let me say that that I don't like it because I do like it. I do think it's cool. It's not for me. It's not the kind of knife I, I would personally wouldn't carry or use it. Um, but I still think it's cool. I still like to review stuff like this. I love reviewing stuff like this. Sometimes my funnest reviews are stuff like this. But uh, but yeah, it's cool. And, um, and thank you, Benjamin. And thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. Peace.